Kia ora koutou katoa, no mai hara mai ki UFC on Sky ko Ravinda Hunia Toku Ingoa. The build up to UFC 294 has been a dramatic one to say the least, with fighters stepping in last minute in both the co main and main events to make sure that this card goes ahead. One of those fighters is the current UFC featherweight champion Alexander Volkanovsky, who takes on Islam Makachev for the lightweight title, and he joins me now. Kia ora Volkan, welcome to the show. Hello. Alexander Volkanovsky, what a whirlwind of the last week, last two weeks of you accepting this fight. Talk to us about receiving this fight on short notice and how ready you are to take on Islam Makachev for a second time. Uh, yeah, it all uh, obviously uh, came very uh, quickly and uh, all by surprise. I, you know, I had no idea that, um, yeah, I didn't think I was uh, fighting in Abu Dhabi, that's for sure, you know what I mean? So I, I tried to get on this card uh, earlier on, straight after my fight, you know, talking to them. And, you know, like if I got the the fight, you know, I would have made sure I could get from camp. Obviously, with the surgery, I would have, you know, I uh, tried to do the best I can to get prepared for that. But, you know, that wasn't the case. Uh, then I was trying to get uh, something like uh, later in the year maybe November, December, I was trying, I wanted to fit another fight in this year. That was, that was one of my goals and I just couldn't do it. So I didn't think I was uh, competing until January. So I was a bit in like holiday mode in a sense, obviously still training as I always do, but um, just try to, all right, keep my mind off training. Uh, not off training, sorry. Keep my mind off, uh, you know, fighting, you know, fight camp and whatnot because it's not going to be coming anytime soon. Uh, so, which is good. I think uh, that's, that's the beauty of uh, all this, really. The fact that I was, I'm fresh, no, you know, like a, even though sometimes I'm going there, oh, something could happen. So you're still in camp, you still got the pressures, you got the injuries, you got all this sort of stuff, but um, I don't have any of that. I've got this freshness and uh, I'm excited and it all come at a, a, at a good time, I think. I think this is something that uh, can definitely work in my favor. So I'm really looking forward to that. But yeah, it all come uh, by surprise. It all happened so quick, but. Unreal. I love it. I also wanted to mention congratulations on a new baby in the house. But, you know, taking on this fight short notice means you have to step outside of the home and come away from Bubba for a little while. And while I know your wife has always been supportive and she knows the go when it's uh, time for, for you to fight, how hard or easy was it to leave the house with a new baby in the house? Uh, yeah, it, is, it is tough. Like, uh, you know, you know, I've got to do what I've got to do, but it's not only tough uh, being away from the, the kids. It's uh, tough. You know, I like to help out as much as I can, you know what I mean? And uh, not being there to help out, obviously, Emma, I uh, sometimes uh, puts a bit of pressure on myself, but um, she always does a great job to make sure I'm not uh, worried about that. And um, But, yeah, like, uh, again, uh, like I said, I think the, the, she was very supportive because she knew. So even though I was... It can get it can get difficult, especially right now. I got my my purpose in life is family and fighting, and fighting is very important. It's a big part of uh, my purpose of, of what I'm doing right now, and I'm in my prime. And the, you know the the days days are limited while you're in your prime, so it gets difficult when I know I'm not in camp training or you know being you know having something planned in the new future in the in the near future can get a, a little bit difficult for me because right now it's a big part of my purpose. And maybe later when the career's over and all that, all right, I don't need to worry about that. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to do my own head in. I'm not going to struggle uh, knowing that I'm not fighting or anything because I shift my focus. Uh, but right now I can't. And uh, so that's, uh, it was getting, you know, it gets a little bit hard. You know, I really wanted to get in there this year. And um, again, I wanted to, you know, as I say, make as much money as I can and stay active and, and do all those things. I think it's better for the head and better, better for me and better for my family as well. Uh, but so she knew that I think. And then uh, as soon as uh, this opportunity come come about, I had uh, nothing but big smiles. She was very happy. I think she knew that it's something that she was very excited because again, it's just still an opportunity. Um, and yeah, so which obviously makes everything so easy. She could have definitely took it completely another uh, in a different direction. You know, we've got a, a, a newborn, you know, whatnot, but it's all right because I'm only, it's only a week, a week and, well, I think I'm going to be gone for just over a week. Uh, and, uh, you know, I can go out and, and it's, if she knows uh, from my head I need her to do this, um, obviously for, for legacy and, you know, there's a, a massive opportunity for us. 
And uh, that's why she's all about it. And if I had to go through camp while I had a newborn, could have been very difficult. So I think that just the timing, I think it's just, it's just meant to be. I was meant to be this way. I think it adds to the story. I think, uh, you know, I still get this fairy tale ending of fighting Islam when all the odds are stacked against me like they were the first time. Because they wouldn't have been. If I had a full camp and, you know, we, we fought wherever it was because they were thinking of maybe doing that next year, if that was even the case, I don't even know if this opportunity could come about because he's talking about moving up. Uh, so, like, there's a few reasons why I had to take this. Uh, but, you know, I did, you know, that fairy tale ending of beating someone, you know, of him, sorry, because after the first one, everyone's going to know, it's like, oh, Alex is in for a real good chance. Now, 12 days notice, all this stuff coming off surgery, all like, there's no way, you know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, no, yeah. all right, we'll see. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I can, I can definitely go out there and uh, uh, still really set a statement and, 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 and blow everyone's mind and, you know, do, do something massive that I thought I did in February, but obviously didn't get the hand raise, but I get to do October. I get to do it still in the same year. Again, it's an opportunity for me and high risk, high reward. That's how I look at this. So I uh, cannot wait. Although I know that winning for you is the only option, I think that no matter the result of this fight, it will go down in history for you, you know, simply taking the fight. But were you surprised at all that you got the green light for this fight? Because when we look at the lightweight division, you know, anyone in the top five arguably could have taken a title fight against us, um, arguably even the top 10. Um, you know, I just beat the number two guy. I previously beat the number six guy, so I'm, I'm not looking to fight backwards. And the only thing in front of me is the winner of this October fight. So that's um, that's who I'm planning. That's who uh, mentally I'm preparing for. You know, I'm not sure which one. I, I mean, if I had to guess, it would be Makachev. And that's a hell of a challenge. So I'm, I'm ready to get, get back to work and, um, you know, make my dreams come true. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, like uh, I get, I was surprised purely. I'm not too surprised that they chose me. I'm just surprised as as I literally just expected to be getting in camp um, a couple of months from now. You know what I mean? So or whenever it was, so that that surprised me. But you know, when you look at it, it's like, oh, if this was to happen, you know, I think uh, it's a, it's a bit of a no brainer for them. It's the biggest fight they 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 can do in this division. I truly believe that, and um, it's a rematch that the world wants to see. Uh, now they get to, you know, just, it, it makes sense. You know what I mean? And I've always said that I'm the guy that, that can be put in these positions. You know what I mean? I will take it. You know what I mean? I, I'm up for any of the challenges. Because, uh, you know, there's a lot of fighters that wouldn't take on a challenge like this. You know what I mean? But uh, I guess the UFC know that I will. And uh, they were right. How much has Islam Makachev been living in your mind rent-free since that loss in February, Volk? Oh, I guess the fight more, not not Islam. Like, uh, yeah, the, the fight more has been obviously always there. And there's things that you know, I know I could have did and they were working on. Um, but, yeah, I guess the fight itself of just, I guess, like, when you're talking techniques and what could have done and all that, but, like, I don't think it's, Oh no, like Islam, you know, you know, it's not, it's not really like that at all. Or even like the loss, you know, it's not something that's uh, really because I know I, you know, I'm like I'm going to get that back. You know what I mean? Like uh, that's just how I, how I look at it. So I moved on pretty much straight away. Uh, but I mean, there's still other parts of that whole situation that obviously I think about and what I could do and like you know uh, evolve in a technique because of things that happen. You got what I mean? Look, all in a positive way. In my head, um, in a positive way, if that makes sense. After that fight in Perth, what do you think it was that got, you know, Islam Makachev over the line and his hand raised? I mean, we had a conversation with um, City Kickboxing head coach Eugene Beerman, who thought that you didn't come forward enough, perhaps, in the earlier rounds. Do you agree with that? I, I, I do agree with you, Eugene. Like, uh, like uh, obviously, I had to fill it out. I had to figure things out myself. I had to figure out, you know, how strong is this guy? Am I am I going to struggle more than I think uh, with the wrestler? Because you know, he's wrestling. He is that good, right? I, I know that. You know, I do always back myself, but I had to figure that out. You know what I mean? And um, where now, I know I can back myself for one. And uh, as I, I've been saying, I can't afford to second guess myself I can't afford um, to not back myself in this one 
You know what I mean? I'm not gonna. I can't. You know, as as I've been saying as well, uh, I don't have time to prepare for the worst. I can't. I don't have time to prepare for the variables and oh, if this goes this way, uh -uh. I ain't got time for any of that. I've got time for what I plan on doing. I've got time for going out there and uh, taking this guy out. So I can't show him respect like I did in the first in the first one. In saying that now, though, you've seen him, felt him and smelt him. How much of an advantage is this for you? Uh, yeah, man. The fact that uh, we've been in there, it gives me confidence in knowing that I can uh, really back myself. Uh, and as I said, uh, you know, I can't afford to show him that respect like I did in the first one. And I know I don't really need to because I've got full confidence in the, what I've seen in February uh, to go out there and... Uh, really uh, set a statement and go and go for the finish. Obviously, I want that finish. Um, yeah, like that. that's just it. I've got plenty simple. I need to do what I feel like I can do and I can't uh, second guess myself and I have to back myself. You know, I'm in a situation where I didn't have the camp that, you know, would be ideal for uh, a fight like this. There's still things that I can do. So uh, I'm going to, there's pros and cons and I just need to go full steam ahead on these pros. Let's talk a little bit about your prep or a very short prep vault because you have a dream team who have answered, you know, somewhat of an SOS call to join you in Abu Dhabi to help you prepare for the weekend. You got the likes of Craig Jones, Frank Hickman, but I know for myself, I'm happy to see Brad Riddell in the ranks as well. What does Brad um, bring for you in terms of preparation? Ah, uh, me like everyone, everyone that's uh, come to to support. Like, even <laughs> like the, we found out, and then I put some phone calls out pretty much straight away, and everyone was just on board from my team back home. Uh, to obviously your your Frank Hickman's to Craig Jones's and uh, even uh, you know, and Brad, Brad Riddell as well. Brad Riddell's here. Um, he's great. So he's obviously been a big part of my career the whole whole time. So he's been through my whole journey. Um, so he was there a lot before the UFC. And then obviously through UFC, um, his UFC career, it was more obviously a lot of that focus had to go on, on himself. So he didn't uh, have too much of that coaching role. Um, where now, because he's having that little break, even though, you know, um, he's, uh, yeah, we've been obviously been in contact the whole time. He's coming there. He's helped me out in a couple of camps. I think he was in my, was he in my last one? No, he was in the last camp for Islam. And, um, yeah, so obviously he's good. Nice, strong, uh, obviously good, great striker and, uh, you know, very clever as well. So I get to uh, not only pick his brains, but have a, a good training partner and a familiar face back in my corner uh obviously that's uh, always incredible but we all get along the the vibes here were incredible everyone's excited um everyone knows that you know yeah like you know these there's a uh, you know there was obstacles there are a lot of people probably couldn't be put in this situation but everyone backs me and knows that i'm the type of guy that can and uh to see the confidence in them and how supportive they've been it's been incredible what can we expect to see this weekend volk you know you're in abu dhabi basically his home turf. You're a heavy underdog, not in your eyes, <laughs> obviously, but will we see something different perhaps? Um, oh, I mean, you never know what it's going to be like when you're out there, but uh, I guess I've never been, I've never had this mindset going in where, you know, usually I have really good preparation, uh, you know what I mean? And I, I take out, you know, I, again, I prepare for the worst. If it goes this way, I've got this, 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 this. Uh, nah, like I told you, I can't afford any of that. So right now it's this is what needs to happen. So I've got the this uh, mindset that I have is um, it, there's a you know very strict path that I have to have to do and have to commit to. So I believe this is going to be the most dangerous you've ever seen me purely because of that. Again, because I can't. There's no hesitation of me or you know second guessing or, or or anything else pure than this is what I plan on doing. It's either it doesn't work or I get this highlight reel finish uh, and absolutely blow up for for taking this on short notice and then like you said this is a historical event a historical fight i think people are going to be talking about this for a very long time this viral rivalry if i go and play uh, and do what i plan on doing um you know this is going to be talked about for uh forever i truly believe that well if the card wasn't already stacked before you jumped on it you've just blown it out of the water absolutely cannot wait for this one vault go well and no worries uh, at all. And thank you. I appreciate everyone. That obviously, the teams that backed me, but not only that, the support that I have has been incredible. So I want to I want to thank everyone, obviously, New Zealand and Australia and all around the world. Thank you for the support and enjoy the show.